Welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. Wrist check, I am wearing yet again the uh, day date, <laughs> the, the yellow gold 40 mil day date. Absolutely love this watch. Now in this video, I would like to talk about the Rolex celebration dial for the Oyster Perpetual. Because when I first saw renders and photographs when this was announced, I thought it was ridiculous. And <laughs> some of you watching this video, you may agree with me. You may think that this looks like a joke. Maybe it's gimmicky. Maybe even it's a troll, like Rolex is trolling their fans or uh, their potential buyers that just could not get a coral red oyster perpetual or a yellow or a turquoise, you know, when they debuted in 2020 because they were, I mean, they were very popular and Rolex discontinued the popular colors after two years. It was only two years on the market. Now, why did they do that? Well, you know, these bold pastel colors, it wasn't the first time that Rolex introduced these bright colors to uh, very popular models that they produced. They did it in the 1970s, and those are known as the Stella dials. Now, those dials were discontinued again after a short duration of time. So they become very collectible, and basically Rolex <laughs> reused that recipe. They injected the color and flavor into basically their entry-level watch, their classic line, the Oyster Perpetual. And uh, really, they were received so well. They were so popular. And a lot of watch collectors never got their hands on the color of choice or the size of choice in those two short years. And so Rolex coming out with a celebration dial that celebrates each of those colors, candy pink and coral red and turquoise and green and yellow, uh, you know, they're celebrating those, I mean, those very successful models that are no longer available. I know the green is still available, but uh, I mean, you guys, you guys know what I'm trying to say here. For the most part, they're very hard to come by. And so it's almost like a troll, like, hey, look what we did. Here are all the colors in one watch. And it's visually very, I don't know, kind of confusing. There's a lot going on on that dial. It's it's very chaotic. That's a better word to use. It's a very chaotic looking dial with the various sizes of circles or bubbles, the different colors, how they are all, you know, surrounded by a black circle. And I, as I understand, there's a high fail rate with the production of these dials. And that does not surprise me because under the macro lens, they look fantastic. I don't see any blemishes. And in years past, as I've done macro work on a number of different Rolex references, I have seen uh, scuffs. I've seen, you know, quality control issues on the applied markers. And that is just not the case here on this celebration dial. It's done very, very well. Now, getting back to how I opened this video, I thought the watch looked ridiculous from pictures. I kind of thought it was a troll. I wasn't really interested in the model. <laughs> you know, I didn't think it was a great way, uh, at least emotionally speaking, to spend around $6,000, $6,400. But man, after seeing it in person and digesting the idea, the history, the concept, and just how outlandish it is, how ridiculous it is, <laughs> maybe it's the contrarian in me, but I find it more appealing now. In fact, I would totally rock this watch. I would wear the heck out of this piece. I think it's just that out there and so different for this brand that we enjoy, Rolex. I mean, you look at this and it's really like nothing that they've ever done. And they've done some outlandish stuff in the past, but nothing quite like this. Now, here's a couple questions I'd like to answer. Uh, how available will the celebration dial end up being? You know, is it going to be discontinued after two years? Well, I mean, I'm, I don't have inside information on this, so I'm just speaking from speculation, but I don't anticipate this to be widely available. In fact, I think this may be even harder to come by than those original fantastic bright pastel colors from 2020. In fact, I could see this watch being a one and done, like one year it's done. It's no longer available. It's the oddity. It's the celebration dial. So if that's the case, I mean, they're already very collectible right now, but can you imagine 10 years from now, a celebration dial that was only made for about one year <laughs> celebrating one of the most influential releases for the brand in the past decade? I think the value on them will be crazy. It will be a hyper collectible. Could I be wrong? 
Absolutely. And I hope that I am wrong because imagine this. Imagine Rolex does the opposite of what everybody thinks they're going to do with availability and the duration of production. Imagine if they just flooded the market and anybody who wanted a celebration dial for the most part could pick up one new from the authorized dealer and they made this for like five, six, eight years. Uh, I think that would be cool because only people who really want this watch because they identify with the concept and the execution, basically they would be the ones buying the watch. And all of the people that speculate about, hey, I can make an easy 10 grand or 20 grand in appreciation on a flip, uh, those people will now not be interested basically in the watch because of how prevalent it would be. And, uh, you know, the, the value on the secondary market just wouldn't be as enticing. So I kind of hope that happens. Do I think it will happen? I don't think it will. But, you know, a guy can hope, right? Now, let me end with one final thing. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I really liked the Oyster Perpetual line uh, with the fresh, bold pastel colors in 2020 is because it really pushed the boundary. It pushed the envelope of what was, you know, acceptable or deemed acceptable by the general watch buying public. These watches were so popular that other brands were trying to get in on this action and they were doing their own pastel dial colors. I'm thinking of Oris. I'm thinking certainly of Zinn. I'm thinking of Citizen. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of nice that Rolex pushed the boundary and in a sense told other brands, hey, it's okay to come out with really bold stuff that you don't quite think will work, but if done properly, will be vastly successful. So I think it's really kind of had an effect on the overall watch market in the past three years. Now, one final thing, a note to any brand that's kind of copied the same concept like Oris and Zinn and Citizen, do not try to replicate a celebration dial. Don't put all of the colors in one dial. Uh, you'll just come across as being a little bit desperate and I don't think it would be received that well. Anyways, guys, I'd like to hear what you have to say about the celebration dial, the original pastel colors of the Oyster Perpetual line in 2020, as well as the historic Stella dials from the 1970s. And if you've made it this far in this video, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. Please give me a like if you're able to do that and subscribe to my channel. I try to post every other day varied watch content. I spend a lot of time creating this watch content for you. So uh, if you're able to do that, I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the comment section.